Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Sega CD games on your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention before we get too far into today's video, for this video, you're already going to need to have both dev mode and RetroArch already set up and installed on your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. That's not something I'm going to be showing you in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen and the link in the description down below to my previous video where I show you step by step how to set that up. I'd recommend go watching that first, then come back here and we can set up and play Sega CD games specifically. The next thing we're going to have to keep in mind is for today's video I'm going to be using a mapped network drive. So if you already had dev mode set up previously and you didn't actually follow my most up to date video, the next thing we're going to be doing is setting up a mapped network drive on our Xbox and on our PC so we can easily transfer files, our BIOS files and game files a little bit later. But the first thing we're going to be doing is setting that up. So if you've already set this up you can feel free to skip this section and just continue on to where we actually set up and talk about BIOS files and games. Over. So the first thing again we need to do is open up our Xbox device portal. This of course can be found on the dashboard of our dev mode. You can find this access portal and we're going to need to open this up in any browser that you want. From this point what we're going to be doing is coming to our left bar right here. We're going to be clicking on file explorer and this is going to open up the file explorer section. Once we're here we're going to be coming to the top right and we're going to be clicking on this browse option right here. This is going to open up a pop-up that's going to allow us to access remotely some files on our Xbox and access the internal storage on our Xbox. So to do this, what we need to do is copy this URL here at the very top. We can highlight it, we can right click and we can click copy. And we're going to be opening up a file explorer on our windows. We're going to be clicking on the URL path right here. We're going to be pasting in the URL that we just got. And we're going to be clicking enter to enter here. Now, if this is your first time doing this, it may ask you for a username and password. All this information is also stored here, so you can simply copy all of this for your username and password. Now this can get a little bit annoying as every time you want to get back here, you will need to manually enter this URL, you'll need to manually enter the password, and you'll need to manually enter the username. So instead what we're going to be doing is two things. The first thing we're going to be doing is opening up our command prompt, and we're going to be automatically saving this password and username, so we no longer have to enter it manually again. To do this again, we're going to be opening up our web browser, and we're going to be copying the CMD key here at the bottom, Simply going to highlight it, we're going to right click and we're going to be clicking copy. From this point we're going to be opening up CMD in Windows. To this we're going to be coming down to the bottom left. We're going to be clicking on our search bar and we're going to be searching for CMD. And we're going to be looking for the command prompt right here. We're going to left click to open this up and our command prompt should open. Once this is open, all we need to do is right click here. It will automatically paste everything we have. We simply click enter and then we should get this result here, credential added successfully. And that basically attaches this username and password to our windows. So it'll automatically remember it every time. From this point, we have made it a lot easier. However, now from this point, you still need to know this URL every time you want to actually access the remote files. So what we're going to be doing is one extra step. This is optional, but we're going to be setting up a mapped network drive. So it'll actually be saved in our windows so we can easily get back here whenever we want. What we're going to be doing again is again copying this file path. We're going to be opening up another file browser in Windows and we're going to be clicking on this PC right here. And then here at the very top we should have this option map network drive. We can left click to open this and here we're going to be able to enter a new drive that will automatically store this location. And since we've already saved the username and password in Windows, it means we'll really easily be able to access back here whenever we want. So the first thing you need to do is assign a drive letter so you can choose whatever you want here. So I've already done this to my Z drive but you can attach it to another drive, for example Y or any other available letter here in your windows. We can then enter our folder location. So here you can just control V again to paste in the folder location that you've set up previously. You can then enable automatic reconnect and sign in. I'm going to be disabling this, but you can feel free to enable this and you can connect using different credentials, although we're not going to be doing that in today's video. Once you're happy with everything here, we can click finish and then you will have a new mapped network drive that will show up here like this. It'll mention development files. It will then show the URL to your Xbox and now clicking this will open this up very easily. So we no longer have to locate back here manually. From this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening up the Windows apps folder and here we should see all the currently installed apps on our Xbox. So at the top here, we have my files explorer. Underneath this, then I have two folders named Platinum Fox and they have RetroArch mentioned in the title. This is my RetroArch folder. Although depending on the version you're using, it may be named slightly different, but there will be two folders here. Previously, this folder started with 1E4C, although this can depend widely depending on the version you're using and depending on if it's a nightly or not. So I really don't know what to expect here, but you're going to be looking for some folder named RetroArch or something like 1E4C. Once you've located this folder, we're going to be looking for the second one on the list. It'll typically be a much larger folder. As you can see, this is around 1.4 gigabytes and the other one is around 3.5 kilobytes. 
We're going to be opening up this second folder. And here we should see all of our default installed RetroArch content. What we're going to be doing from this point is creating a new folder here that's going to store our BIOS files or a brand new system folder or creating a brand new system BIOS folder. So we can access and transfer all the BIOS files we need for our emulators over here or for today's video, specifically the GBA emulator. What we need to do is right click here. We're going to be creating a new folder and I'm going to be naming it system. And this is going to be our new system or BIOS folder for RetroArch. After this, we're going to be heading over to RetroArch and we're going to be manually mapping this. So RetroArch knows to point here instead. While we're here, we can also add a couple of extra folders. We can add a saves folder. We can add a save state folder. We can add a config folder and we can even add a games folder. Here you can pick and choose all the different files that you will access regularly from RetroArch and we can remap them so RetroArch will look here instead of on the internal Xbox storage that we cannot actually access any other way. Doing this method, we will easily be able to access this. We can make backups, we can make copies. So this is definitely a method I'd recommend doing it. But for today's video, the only one that is necessary is creating a system folder. Although you can feel free to make any other folders here as well that you like, but it is totally optional. From this point, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be launching RetroArch from here and we're going to be brought up to our RetroArch UI. From here, we're going to be coming to the left. We're going to be coming to settings and now we're going to be scrolling down until we see directory. And here we can see the directory for all the different assets inside RetroArch. So the first thing we're going to be looking for is the BIOS and system file. As you can see right here, we're going to be clicking the A button to open this up. Once this opens up, we're going to be scrolling down until we see the S drive. We're going to be clicking the A button. We're going to be scrolling down to program files. We're going to be coming to Windows apps and then we're going to be looking for our RetroArch folder, the same one that we've seen on our computer. So for me, it's Platinum Fox. I'm going to be looking for the second folder. And here I'm going to be looking for my system folder. I'm going to be clicking use this directory. And now what we've done is we have remapped this directory to our system folder on our mapped network drive. So RetroArch will now search there for our BIOS files instead of the default location. So from this point, you can feel free to update any of the other files you want. I'm going to be doing my config file, my save file, and a couple of the other ones. From this point, once you have everything mapped, we're simply going to be clicking the B button to come back out of here. We're then going to be coming to our main menu and we're going to be coming to our configuration file and we're going to be saving our current config just so all of these extra changes are in RetroArch. So I currently have my Sega CD BIOS files right here and here I have a couple of different BIOS files and you might need a couple of different BIOS files depending on the region you want to play and depending on the actual games and ROMs that you have. So at the moment there is three different region ROM files you can have. There's a European, a Japanese and a USA file and they all need to be named exactly like this. I will also mention I'm not going to be sharing any links for showing you how to download these BIOS files. So depending on the type of file that you have, you need to name it BIOS underscore CD and then underscore the extension of the region that you're in. So E, J or U. And at the moment, I currently have all three of these specific BIOS files. What we're going to be doing is simply taking these files and dragging and dropping them inside the system folder in our Xbox. Just like that, I'll be bringing them over. And here we have our BIOS files fully set up. The next thing we're going to be talking about is games. And at the moment, I currently have my Sonic CD game here downloaded. Now for games, I will also mention, I'm not going to be sharing any download links. Again, you'll have to find your own or you can feel free to create a dump or backup of your existing Sega CD games. So once you have your game, if you've downloaded it like me, it may come in a .rar or a .7zip format. It is possible to load these in RetroArch, but I always recommend extracting them first. To do this, we are going to need WinRAR or 7-Zip to extract these files. What I'm going to be doing is extracting this .rar using 7-Zip right now. I'm simply going to be right clicking. If you're on Windows 11 like me, you simply need to show more properties. I'm going to be hovering over 7-Zip and I'm going to be extracting the files here. Or if you'd like to select the location, you can feel free to extract files and then choose a the location. So what I need to do is extract your files. Once this is done, your game files will be extracted out. And for me, this is the current format that I have my games in. It is a lot of MP3 files along with a .iso image file. And depending on the actual file that you have, it might come up in a couple of different formats. It can be a Q and a .bin file as well. Now, while we're on the point of audio, depending on the game format you have, you might actually have some extra issues with audio. So to have the least amount of issues, it is recommended to use a .bin and a .q file for your game formats. Otherwise, if you're using a .iso on multiple MP3 files like me, you may have some issues when trying to load audio in your games where audio might just not play, or you might have certain sections of the game where audio will not show up and it feels very empty. You may still have sound effects for certain game actions, but this is something that can happen depending on the format of your game. But typically you will have a lot of extra .mp3 files with your games. And it's important to note that when this happens, loading them from an external drive will actually not show any of these extra MP3 files. 
Typically when you load from an external drive due to the limitation of dev mode and retroarch, we're just loading the specific game files that are linked to the file we're selecting and not all of the other potentially linked files. So what we're going to be doing in today's video instead and what I would suggest doing is actually transferring all of these files to the internal storage on our Xbox so we have everything available to us there. So what I'm going to be doing is coming back to my folder, I'm going to be coming to my games folder and I'm going to be creating a new folder here called Sega CD. I'm going to be entering this folder and I'm going to be creating a new folder here called Sonic CD for all of our game files for Sonic CD. Depending on if you downloaded your games or extracted them, they may already come in a pre-existing folder. But for me in today's video, I'm going to have to select all these files manually. And what I'm going to be doing is simply dragging and dropping all of these game files into the Sega CD folder on our Xbox. So we can access all of them there and hopefully this will remove any potential issues with missing audio, missing links or anything else like that. Now, just like that, I've transferred my Sega CD game over to my Xbox. From this point, we can simply back out of here. We can now head over to our Xbox. We're going to be continuing and setting everything else up from there. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. So once you're over on your Xbox, what we're going to be doing is launching RetroArch. Once RetroArch is launched, what we're going to be doing is coming to our main menu. We're going to be looking for the load core option. And from this point, what we're going to be doing is scrolling down until we see Sega. And here we're going to be looking for Sega-MS-GG-MD-CD or in brackets Genesis plus GX. Now there's a couple different cores you can use here. There's Genesis plus GX wide and there's Genesis plus GX. For today's video, I'm just going to be using the normal Genesis plus GX. But you can feel free to experiment with the wide version if you would like. Simply click A to open this up. Then we're going to be coming down to load content. And here we're going to have to locate where our games are. Now, if you're loading your games from an external drive, they will be inside your E drive right here. And here you can just locate to wherever your games are. Otherwise, what we're going to be doing to load them from the internal storage is coming down to our S drive. We're going to be coming down to program files, Windows apps. We're going to be looking for our RetroArch folder. And here we can just locate to wherever you put your games on your internal storage. Now, if you are having issues finding them on the internal S storage on your drive, they can show up inside your D drive, inside your development files, inside Windows apps, again, inside your RetroArch folder, and you can find your games here as well. Now, I'd recommend not using your D drive if possible and try to reinstall both RetroArch and dev mode to get them inside your S drive. I'm not sure why it happens that it goes to your D drive instead, but using files inside your D drive or adding any files here can brick your RetroArch and potentially your dev mode and might require you to fully install dev mode again. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'd recommend trying to stick to your S drive as much as possible. So what we're going to be doing is coming back here to our program files, Windows apps, again, inside our RetroArch folder, games folder, I'm going to be looking for Sega CD, Sonic CD, and then we're going to be looking for the ISO file that we had set up and extracted previously. So for me, I have that right here. We're simply going to be clicking the A button to open this up. Again, if you have multiple cores that can read this file type, we're simply going to be selecting our current core that's selected here at the very top, Genesis plus GX. I'm going to be clicking the A button again. Our screen is going to go black for a couple of seconds, and then our game is going to start to load up. Now, depending on how big your game is or if you're loading it from an external drive, this can take a couple of seconds to load, so you might just want to be patient here. And as mentioned, if you are missing any in-game music or any sort of audio, it can be because you're missing your MP3 files, and it's best to move everything to the internal storage instead. From this point, what we're going to be doing is opening up our on-screen menu for RetroArch. We can do this by clicking down and select, and this will open up this on-screen menu right here. From this point, we're going to be scrolling down until we see the Options tab. We're going to be clicking A to open this up. And here we're going to have a couple of different options specifically for our core that we can play around with. The first thing we have is our system settings, and here we have a couple of different things that we can take a look at. We can set up system hardware. And here you can choose between the different systems this core supports. Auto for me had no issues, so I'd recommend leaving it on auto. We can select our system region. Again, I didn't have any issues with automatic, but you can feel free to select between the few here, depending on the game you're trying to play. We have our system boot ROM. You can turn this on or off, which will use the official bootloader for emulated hardware. This will require a restart to come into an effect. We can set up our CD system BRAM. Here you can feel free to change it between per BIOS and per game. I would only recommend playing with this if you really know what you're doing, so I'd recommend leaving it on per BIOS for the most part. We have our CD add-on, the MD mode. This does require a restart. Again, we can feel free to leave this on auto, but you can set it up for Sega or the Mega CD, Mega SD or none. But for me, I didn't have any issues. Leaving it on auto was right for the most part. And then finally, we have the cartridge lock-on. Again, you have a couple of extra options here depending on what you want to play. You can set up a Game Genie, an Action Replay, or the Sonic & Knuckles expansion card. And you can set all those up inside the system folder. 
The next thing we have are the video settings and here we have a couple of extra things. I'm not gonna be talking about everything here, but a couple of the main ones. And finally, we have our frame skip and the frame skip threshold. If this is something you're interested in, you can feel free to enable and play around with these if you would like. Next thing we have are the audio settings. And here we have a couple of different things. I'm not gonna be touching on these too much as I didn't really have any issues. The first thing we can do is set up the master system FM. Again, we can set it auto on or off. Automatic didn't have any issues for me. We can set up our master system FM core. So again, I, so again you can change it between MAME and Nuked, but again, I didn't have any issues with this. We can set up our sound output from stereo and mono. And then finally, you have a couple of extra audio settings here. You can feel free to play around with if you know what you're doing with these. Then we have emulation hacks. So here we have a couple of extra options here. Again, I wouldn't really recommend playing with this unless you really know what you're doing. And I feel like for most people playing with these, you can actually cause more issues than you can solve. So really only experiment here if you know what you're doing with this. And then finally, we have advanced channel volume settings. And here you can feel free to experiment with all these extra volume settings. I've never actually played with any of these. There's a lot of different options here. But again, you can feel free to come in here and set up everything that you want. From this point, the last thing I'd recommend doing is creating a game playlist. It's basically going to concatenate all of your games into one section. So you can really easily put all of your games here. It's going to be great if you're using a lot of different cores and a lot of different consoles. It makes using RetroArch a lot better and saves you a lot of different manual work when you're switching between things. And it's definitely something I'd recommend doing if you're going to be using RetroArch a lot. It's not something I'm going to be showing you in today's video, although you'll be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step by step how to set that up. Anyway, guys, I want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members, Sean Daly and Joshua Davis. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate it. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos or some other perks, be sure to click the join button or any video on the channel. It would really help me out and I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play Sega CD games on your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to support me, be sure to drop a super thanks in this video. It would really help me out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.